Thank you. We will now move on to the next item of business. And I would ask those who are leaving the gallery to please do so quickly and quietly. Thank you very much indeed. So the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 10364 in the name of Jack Eden Barr on World Rivers Day 2023. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who would wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Jackie Dunbar to open the debate up to seven minutes please Mr Dunbar. Thank you presiding officer. Uh, I'm pleased to have secured the members debate today to celebrate World Rivers Day 2023. I'd like to thank all the members who supported my motion and also all the organisations who have gotten in touch and provided very helpful briefings in advance of the debate. And I'd also like to declare my interest as the nature's champion of sea trout. World Rivers Day is a celebration of the world's waterways held on the fourth Sunday of September each year, which means this year's celebration will be taking place this coming Sunday on the 24th of September. World Rivers Day is especially relevant to us given Scotland ren is renowned worldwide for the environmental quality of our rivers, lochs, seas, and waterways, which attract visitors and support our key industries. Scotland's landscape is shaped by its rivers, and those rivers provide fresh water to sustain us, support our farms, drive industry, and power our homes. And Scotland as a whole has over 125,000 kilometres of waterways, ranging from small burns to wide, deep rivers. Every major city has grown up around them, and they have benefited our populations hugely, not just economically, with them being the gateway to trade and transport goods in the past, but also for the health and well-being of our citizens. Edinburgh has the Forth, Glasgow has the Clyde, Dundee has the Tay, and Aberdeen has two. Uh, we have the benefit of both the Dee and the Don. The River Don runs through my constituency of Aberdeen Donside, Hence the reason why I was delighted to become the champion of the sea trout as it leaves the North Sea to travel up the River Don to spawn each year. One of my favourite walks is to take a dander along the, the riverbank where wildlife roam freely right on my doorstep. Last time I was lucky enough to see a heron standing on a large stone in the river and I just hoped it wasn't on the prowl for one of my sea trout on its way upstream. Presiding officer, folk have lived and worked along the River Don for centuries, and you can still see the relics of Aberdeen's industrial past and some of the better-known mills on the lower reaches of the Don. The river has been used as a power source to drive processes and machines for hundreds of years, and this really developed in the 1700s when there were several mills along the river, with many becoming large concerns and household names, such as the inventor of the Crombie Court, John Crombie at Granham Mills. The textile mills have all closed, however, but you will still find machinery and building along the river, which stands testament to this fine part of the city's history. Presiding officer, a wee look at the history of World Rivers Day itself. The United Nations launched the Water for Life decade back in 2005 to help create a greater awareness of the need to better care for water resources. This led to Mark Angelo, an internationally renowned river advocate, establishing World Rivers Day. The proposal for a worldwide event to celebrate rivers was following the success of BC Rivers Day, which Mark had founded and led in Western Canada in 1980. And the annual event has grown a fair bit since then, continuing to grow annually and is celebrated last year by several million folk in about up to 100 countries. Presiding officer, our rivers and waterways faces challenges moving forward, whether that be the effects of climate change or the impact we have on our planet and its environment. The likes of water temperature, extreme flow events, nutrient enrichment and pollution can be substantial and have a cumulative effect on not only our waters, but the living creatures within them. For example, Atlantic salmon and sea trout play a vital role in the complex life cycle of the freshwater peril mussel, as they act as a host in the larval stage. And this is just one example of how we cannot afford to lose a link in our ecosystems. 
I know the champion for the freshwater pearl mussel, Audrey Nicholl, has taken part in the debate today, and I'm sure she'll be able to expand on this further. Without the trees on the river banks and the foliage, the temperature rises in the river, which in turn means there is no shade for the trout or salmon to rest in as they make their way upstream to spawn. Riverwoods is a wide partnership initiative led by the Scottish Wildlife Trust and is one example of how coordinated actions help create thriving riverbank woodlands and healthy river systems and help keep river temperatures at where they should be. I thank them and their partners for their work and I also thank the landowners and communities who are taking part in the landscape scale res restoration projects, for example, remirandering to help combat the loss of spawning river gravel habitat. On the very point of the impact our waterways have on the species which live within them, I think it's a good opportunity to highlight the Scottish Government's wild salmon strategy, a strategy that also benefits the sea trout and the brown trout, as they have similar life histories, and all would benefit from improved river and river bank conditions. I think it's appropriate that we acknowledge the work the Scottish Government is doing here in Scotland, but also recognise the commitment within the strategy to support and push forward collective action in the international arena as well, particularly to, asset the young, to assist sorry, the young salmon and sea trout that depart our rivers to survive the challenges they face on the high seas and who return to their home river to spawn the next generation. Presiding officer, the health of our river basins is a key commitment of our Scottish Government and I was pleased to see the previous Environment Minister bring forward in partnership with SEPA the River Basin Management Plans for Scotland 2021 to 2027. It sets out ambitious targets to improve water quality in Scotland's waterways by 15%, to ensure 81% of Scotland's water environment being in good condition by 2027. The plan aims to work with land managers to reduce diffuse pollution from agriculture and support passage of micro, micro, oh, I can't say that word, <laughs> migratory fish such as salmon. Presiding officer, as I draw my remarks to a close, I would like to thank members who have supported my motion and members in the chamber for their attendance and I look forward to listening to contributions during debate on this important issue. Thank you, Mr. Barr. I now call Evelyn Tweed to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Ms. Tweed. Hello, officer, and thank you to my friend and colleague, Jackie Dunbar, for bringing this important debate to the chamber. In Scotland, rivers, their small tributaries and lochs and runoffs that feed them are home to thousands of species. When our rivers are healthy, biodiversity thrives. And when our rivers are not looked after, the ill effects are many. If we take the fourth as an example, as was me mentioned by Jackie Dunbar, industry has had a lasting impact. Everything from chemical and agricultural pollution and forestry can put pressure on the river system. In my constituency, a wide range of local projects are making strides to support river systems and recover lost biodiversity. Individual landowners like Kate Sankey of West Moss Side Organic Farm have encouraged riverbanks to re-naturalise after years of dredging and have seen the return of otters, water voles and most recently beavers as a result. The Cars of Stirling project are getting schoolchildren involved in learning about species in wetlands. The Fourth Rivers Trust are planting trees along the Allen Water to boost habitat, provide a wildlife corridor and shade for river species. This is increasingly important as greater extremes of weather brought by climate change see hot, dry summers, which dry up bodies of water and lead to increased risk of fire, as well as decimating water-reliant species. Winters are wetter, with enormous rainfall over short periods bringing flash floods and washing away roads, fields and habitat. If we support our river systems, we can do a great deal to mitigate this. 
In November 2021, the Bowser family became the first private landlords in Scotland to legally translocate beavers to unenclosed ponds. 14 beavers have since been released on Ardoch Burn near Doon. All came from land in Tayside where lethal control licences had been issued. I was delighted to visit Neil Bowser last week at his farm to see where the beavers live and what a wonderful job they have done of transforming the local environment. Unfortunately, they were resting as they had been very busy building dams, chewing logs and more beaver behaviour. So I didn't actually see them, but maybe next time. Neil does do small tours at certain times of the year for those that are interested. Beavers are often known as ecosystem engineers, helping to provide habitat for young fish, food for invertebrates and deep pools for large fish to rest and much more. But as Neil told me, they, have, they also have a transformational impact on the wider environment too. At Ardoch Burn, in previous summers, ponds and streams evaporated, whilst in winter they flooded. They also flooded the farmsteading below. However, since the beavers' arrival, their dams have meant that the pond has stayed full through one of the driest summers on record and kept thousands of water-dependent species alive. I know from my work as a nature champion for the rare azure hawker dragonfly just how important it is to ensure ponds don't dry up. It's extremely heartening to hear about the positive impact that these projects are achieving. Collaborative work working between farmers, local organisations and communities with a holistic approach can do so much. We must continue to do all that we can to look after our rivers and watercourses and mitigate the impacts of climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reid. I now call Alexander Burnett to be followed by Mercedes Villalba. Mr. Burnett. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank you to Jackie Dunbar for bringing this important issue to debate to recognise World Rivers Day. Uh, and I refer members to my entry regarding the River Dee in the Register of Members' Interest. Uh, I'd also like to note that I was previously the Link Nature Champion for the Freshwater Pearl Mussel uh, and enjoyed spending days learning all about the conservation works taking place uh, to support a wealth of biodiversity. Uh, the Pearl Mussel is an important indicator species and its decline is unfortunately a shameful testament to this government's willful neglect of our rivers, uh, which I'm sure Audrey Nicker will be able to explain shortly. Now, the River Dee is recognised as a special area of conservation for its efforts to protect Atlantic salmon, freshwater pearl mussels and otters, with numerous initiatives put in place to protect salmon numbers, such as catch and release, and the Million Trees campaign run by the River Dee Trust, uh, which I was delighted to see shortlisted for a Nature of Scotland award last night in Parliament. But sadly, my mailbox is now filled with constituents, businesses and tourists who are concerned about the declining number of salmon in the River Dee. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware from my correspondence that people are frustrated about seal predation, not just eating and scaring the fish, but pushing them off their reds during the spawning season and disrupting their reproduction. The Scottish Government's Wild Salmon Strategy Implementation Plan does rightly seek a review of the seal licensing system, but it commits to developing non-lethal methods of control, which dis is disappointing, as we already know that these measures do not work effectively. And local businesses are already reporting a loss of custom due to the shocking decline in numbers. Fishing plays a vital role in our rural economy, attracting tourists from all over the world and supporting hundreds of jobs at local businesses. So I hope the Scottish Government will take serious action to tackle all predators that are dis disrupting wildlife in our rivers. Uh, I've also worked with scientists in the community who are concerned about pharmaceuticals in the water. Increases in antibiotics and estrogenic hormones can be very harmful to local wildlife. But there is no reference to this in the government's plan. So I would ask the Scottish Government uh, to address this. And now I turn to the concern of pollution in our rivers. Less than 4% of overflows are monitored, compared to over 90% in England and Wales. And we know that SEPA's licensing conditions do not currently require Scottish Water to report discharge data on either the River Don or the River Dee in my constituency. 
and when Scottish Water confirmed the priority locations, identified for the new 1,000 spill monitors, the closest location to the northeast was the Invergarry Burn in Dundee. Now, whilst 500 million for improving urban water route map might sound impressive, this funding is supposed to last until 2027 and doesn't promise anything for rural communities. So it's clear the SNP government are not doing enough to treat declining salmon numbers, and it's not doing enough to monitor sewage pollution. And with rivers like the Dee and the Don being vital areas for salmon and conservation, water quality testing and sewage monitoring should be undertaken regularly. And the monitored overflows in Scotland discharged in excess of 47 billion litres of untreated sewage into rivers, locks and coastal waters in 2022 alone. And the exact number is likely to be much higher, given so few of these overflows are actually monitored. So the fact of the matter is that the data presented by the SNP government cannot reflect the true picture because they simply aren't monitoring rivers across Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Burnett. I now call Mercedes Pialba to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Ms Pialba. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Let me begin by congratulating Jackie Dunbar on securing today's debate marking World Rivers Day 2023. Our rivers are a vital resource in our fight against climate change and biodiversity loss because our river systems provide a crucial habitat to countless species. As well as the interconnected species such as sea trout, Atlantic salmon and freshwater pearl mussels referenced in today's motions, our rivers are also home to a wide range of insect and plant life, all of which contribute to the health of our wider environment and ultimately to our food security and our public health. So Labour welcomes Scottish Water's Improving Urban Water's route map and associated investment, but we must also address the complex problems which are endangering wildlife, preventing biodiversity recovery and risking our health. Presiding officer, in 2021, the longest sewage overflow event in duration was reported in Aberdeen in my region. Sewage reportedly spilled into the River Dee for more than four months straight, a shocking 130 days from April to September. But the truly shocking thing is that the volume of waste was not recorded. We know that sewage overflows can cause algae blooms, loss of biodiversity, and introduce other pollution into our rivers. And it's not just nature that suffers, it's our quality of life. Our waterways are a source of recreational enjoyment for many of us. And we were reminded during the pandemic just how crucial access to nature is to our health and well-being. So it's clear that monitoring of overflows must improve, but this cannot happen without the installation of spill monitors. In December 2021, Scottish Water vowed to increase the number of storm drain monitors to more than 1,000 by the end of 2024. However, as of 1st of March this year, not a single new device had been installed. And when I asked the First Minister to confirm exactly how many of those 1,000 storm drain monitors he expected to be installed by the end of this year, he couldn't give me a figure. So this does little to reassure my constituents in the North East that an event like that four-month spill in the River Dee won't happen again. So I hope the Minister will provide the Chamber with an update on the progress of that work today. Presiding officer, the importance of affording the highest possible protection to our natural environment cannot be overstated. However, this is not currently the case for Scotland's waters. Parliament has previously heard that untreated human waste was discharged into Scotland's waters more than 10,000 times in a single year. Our rivers are part of a rich water network that connects habitats, species, and life across the country. So even where sewage is not discharged directly into our rivers, the impact is still felt in them. So to conclude, presiding officer, for the sake of our health, our well-being, and the future of our environment, regulation of Scotland's waters must be driven by four core principles. 
keeping Scotland's water in public hands, ensuring access to clean water for local communities, protecting public health, and protecting Scotland's natural environment so that next year's World Rivers Day can truly be a celebration of our rivers. Thank you, Ms. Bialba. I now call Mark Ruskell to be followed by Audrey Nicol. Mr. Ruskell. Thank you. And can I thank Jackie Dunbar for securing this debate? And having had the privilege of living on the banks of River Teeth for 15 years, I learned very quickly that you know, rivers really do help to change your whole perception of, of the natural world and the environment around you. You become far more aware of changing seasons, you become far more aware of you know, storm surges and droughts and the impacts on the river, and you get to know the wonderful creatures uh, that live in and around the river as well. So it's an amazing experience, and I really enjoyed hearing um, from Evelyn Tweed uh, about the, the beavers that have been reintroduced to Argety and how they're thriving now. And I've been proud to support the Bowsers um, to get that license um, over many years and congratulate the minister for finally getting that over the line. Um, it has been a success uh, and there isn't any conflict with surrounding landowners. All we're left now is with the site of the beavers at, at the ponds, but also the, the amazing benefits that it's bringing to the natural environment as well. So a great success. Um, but in recent years, I think we've, we've all become increasingly more aware of our rivers because you know there's this growing movement of wild swimmers who are swimming in our locks and rivers and, and seas um, and earlier this month I had the pleasure of meeting a group of wild swimmers from Fife and the group held uh, a wild swim in the River Tay earlier this year but unfortunately uh, many of the people who were swimming uh, got ill uh, potentially due to a, a sewage spill from a combined sewage um, outflow at Stanley on the, on the River Tay. Uh, and their main ask um, of Scotch Water is to provide that monitoring and that accessible public information that Mercedes Villalba spoke about so that they know when there is an increased risk of pollution. Now at present, less than 4% of the CSOs in Scotland are monitored and reported. And I learned from the Marine Conservation Society that only 11 out of the 496 outflow sites in my own region are monitored with over 1,300 spillages recorded in 2022. Now, a number of the freshwater habitats that we have in Scotland have deteriorating water quality because of the sewage outflows and also because of phosphorus from agricultural runoff or new developments. So the monitoring is really important to find out what's going on, but we also need to get to the root cause of the problem uh, and invest and, uh, and invest in the solutions. Now, I think one effective way to do that is to expand the network of designated bathing water sites to encourage that investment between SEPA and Scottish Water. And, you know, bathing water designations aren't just for coastal beaches. We have got some fresh water sites that have been designated, but they're still quite low in numbers in Scotland. Um, but I do think that joint work between SEPA, Scottish Water, and other stakeholders uh, to monitor and to improve water quality has resulted in some pretty dramatic improvements uh, in many areas that have been designated. And for those that do fall short of, des of, uh, of the required standard, it does drive that targeted investment. But the guidelines for uh, designating sites in Scotland require that each site receives at least 150 daily visitors, which does de deter applications. And that's one reason why, according to SEPA, only six bathing water applications were received in the last five years in Scotland. If you compare that with England, England has no threshold for visitors, so it's clearly an easier application process. Um, presiding also, I just want to very briefly highlight uh, the Leaven programme, um, which brings together landowners, restoration specialists, local community and others to restore the, liver, the river Leaven in Fife for the benefit of local people and wildlife. Um, historically, of course, everyone will know that the Leaven played an important role in powering industry. But through this program, there are plans to restore habitats by planting river woodlands along and within the river, modifying dams to make it easier for fish to migrate, create ponded areas for wildlife, and critically, to improve public access. And this work all connects with the program to reopen the Leavenmouth Rail Route. So it's a great example of joined up thinking uh, and investment. So to conclude, you know, I hope that all rivers in Scotland will have in time the opportunity for restoration that the Leaven has and I thank once again Jackie Dunbar for giving me the opportunity to highlight a few of the issues at stake here. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Roscoe. And I now call Audrey Nicholl. Ms. Nicholl. Thank you very much. Um, I congratulate my friend and colleague Jackie 
Dunbar for bringing this motion, marking World Rivers Day 2023 forward. And of course, we can both boast, uh, as uh, uh, Jacqueline Dunbar uh, alluded to earlier, that as North East MSPs, we have two magnificent rivers, the Dee and the Dawn, running through our respective constituencies. The motion is comprehensive and rightly reflects why Scotland is renowned for its fresh waters. They produce, provide our drinking water, they're used to generate electricity, they're essential for the production of our whisky, and they provide a home to iconic species such as the Atlantic salmon and the freshwater pearl mussel. Free-flowing rivers mean that water can move downstream well, freely, thereby allowing fish to migrate without restriction and invertebrates such as the freshwater pearl mussel to thrive. And I have lasting and vivid memories of my granny wearing a simple string of pearls from the magnificent River Tay, where I spent much of my childhood. And the significance of them passed me by at that time. However, in later life, they've taken on a whole new meaning. So it will come, therefore, as no surprise, as has been highlighted, I'm absolutely delighted to be nature champion for the freshwater pearl mussel. Freshwater pearl mussels are one of the UK's most threatened species. Scotland holds almost half the global population. They are fully protected, making it illegal to take them from a river. And this summer, I had the pleasure of joining Craig McAdam of Bug Life and Susan Cooksley of the James Hutton Institute. And we were also joined by Edwin Third of the River Dee Trust on the River Dee, where I was so lucky to see freshwater pearl mussels in situ, in their natural environment, thriving and safe. It was truly remarkable, an absolute privilege to hold a mussel estimated to be around about 60 years old. And this may be the one and only time that I agree with Alexander Burnett, but sadly, through various threats such as poaching, eh, water pollution, eh, loss of habitat and climate change, the freshwater pearl mussel is now classified as endangered. So then how can we preserve not only this vulnerable species, but other wildlife species reliant on our rivers? During my day out, I also had the pleasure of visiting the Easter Belty Burn, a restoration project near Turfins, returned from a straightened agricultural stream to a natural meandering course, improving habitats for nature and boosting climate resilience. The project has created an over two kilometre stretch of meandering river corridor, flowing through 10 hectares of floodplain, which is rich in habitats where nature can thrive. And I would encourage all members to visit it at some point. It's truly beautiful. And it's for this reason nature-based solutions will be crucial in recovering not only Scotland's freshwater pearl mussel population, but our wider wildlife populations. The Scottish Government have enacted additional measures to improve fresh freshwater pearl mussel population levels, supported by the commitment of organisations like the James Hutton Institute, the River Dee Trust and many others. And the aim is to reintroduce mussels to rivers where they had once been extinct and outlawing the disturbance, injury, theft or killing of freshwater pearl mussels. And I hope that with the aid of these measures, we will soon see growing numbers again of the pearl mussel. So in closing, it is imperative that we maintain the biodiversity of Scottish rivers and I welcome the efforts made by the Scottish Government and all stakeholders to achieve this. So again, I'd like to thank Jackie Dunbar for tabling this member's debate and I look forward to celebrating World Rivers Day this weekend with a walk at the River Dee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Nicholl. And I now call on Lauren Slater, Minister, to respond to the debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Scotland's rivers define our iconic landscapes. From mountain tributaries to estuaries flowing into the oceans, they provide vital water and rich habitats and help us adapt to global threats, including climate change and water scarcity. As Mark Angelo, founder of World Rivers Day, puts it, rivers are the arteries of our planet. They are the lifelines in the truest sense. 
We have many innovative initiatives underway in Scotland to nurture, improve and protect our rivers. And I'm proud to be able to outline a few of these today. Working with the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency to implement river basin management plans, we are investing £4 million this year to continue the work of the Water Environment Fund. The Water Environment Fund restores access to rivers for migratory fish, including salmon, by removing barriers to fish passage. It also restores urban rivers, providing multiple benefits for biodiversity, climate change adaptation, leisure and flood management. Since 2021, the Scottish Government's Nature Restoration Fund has also awarded in excess of £2.3 million for projects to restore and revive river habitats and improve their resilience to climate change. I was delighted to visit the River Almond to see this work in action and to celebrate the Seafield Weir Removal Project. I have also visited restoration projects along the Dee and the Don. Uh, the re-meandering, re what a wonderful word that is, <laughs> The re-meandering of the river to allow for those spawning habitats, the embedding of felled trees into the, into the base of the river to allow for habitats for invertebrates for spawning and also for that important shading and the planting, of course, along the side of the river to provide that shading and to provide those animal habitats. It is glorious to see those rivers coming back to life. The Scottish Government are also working closely with partners to develop integrated catchment management techniques to restore rivers and improve natural flood management. We take the issue of declining populations of wild Atlantic salmon very seriously, and our wild salmon strategy is working with multiple partners to ensure the protection and recovery of this iconic species. I take a different view from my colleague Anders Alexander Burnett about the primacy of seal predation on Atlantic salmon, there are human impacts on these species as well as climate impacts and it is important that we look at all of these issues in the round in order to restore this iconic species to Scotland's rivers. A priority theme is improving the condition of rivers and giving salmon free access to cold, clean water. They are so sensitive to climate change. Our actions to achieve this are wide-ranging, supporting salmon recovery and benefiting wider river biodiversity. All these actions we take that are good for salmon are good for other species as well, including the critically endangered freshwater pearl mussel. We are also committed to ensuring our efforts are informed by the latest scientific evidence. Earlier this month, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs, Land Reform and Islands announced funding of over £500,000 to allow Scotland's network of fisheries boards and river trusts to monitor salmon this year. I know that there has been much concern raised by members, specifically around the matter of sewage spills and overflows, uh, on, especially onto our beaches and into our rivers, that uh, cause you know, the distressing uh, waste that we find, uh, sanitary waste. I was this morning participating in a beach clean where we were picking up that kind of sanitary waste it is absolutely distressing. I know it is for, for everyone um, that these incidences occur. Scottish water has reduced uh, environmental pollution incidents by 60% over the last decade, from 800 each year to fewer than 300. And that is despite increasingly challenging weather patterns. This is an ongoing project. Scottish Water have invested around £880 million in the period of 2010 to 2021 on targeted improvements to environmental quality. They are also investing an extra half a billion pounds over the period of 2021 to 2027 as part of their Improving Urban Waters Roadmap. Uh, as some of the members in the chamber raised today, including uh, Mercedes Vialba, I'll respond to her question, which is that through comprehensive asset studies, Scottish Water is identifying the right locations for increased monitoring to maximize the benefit to our environment and to ensure value for money. And I am pleased to confirm that they expect to install over a thousand additional monitors by August 2024, which is ahead of the timetable set out in the route map. I'm so excited by this debate today, presiding officer, because it provided such an uh, enthusiastic discussion of biodiversity. Uh, members have mentioned otters, water voles, beavers, herons, salmon, trout, dragonflies, and of course the pearl mus uh, mussel. And I'm going to add another species to this. This morning, 
on the beach clean that I was part of, I heard the announcement that oysters have been returned to the fourth. They have been extinct in the fourth for a hundred years, and despite finding piles and piles of oyster shells on the beach this morning, those are over a hundred years old. But today, this species is returning to the fourth. So much effort is being put into restoring our glorious rivers to what they should be. I was so excited to hear uh, what Evelyn's tweet uh, uh, stories about the beavers, and to, that she noted how important they are for preventing flooding and for storing water during dry seasons. This is something that will become more and more crucial as climate change progresses. Our ability to manage water is tied up with how we manage the natural environment around our rivers. And that includes managing river temperatures, which I know some of my colleagues have also raised the issue of. So many species are sensitive to the temperature of the water in our rivers. And by shading the rivers, planting along the banks, ensuring that they, there are obstructions within the water that can provide shade and cool spots for important species like salmon to spawn, we are restoring that natural balance. We are on a journey in Scotland to, pro to progress and improve our biodiversity, to improve our clean water, to make sure there is clean water everywhere and the standard of our rivers is very high. We want to see thriving nature throughout Scotland and businesses and communities to be able to enjoy and benefit from our rivers. And thank you very much to colleagues today for bringing this debate and congratulations to Jackie Dunbar. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting until 2.30 p.m. Thank you.